Hey everyone, and welcome to Tony for Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, uh, I mean Tony for you. Vishnu, the supreme being in the major Hindu tradition and shaper of the universe, side by side with Shiva, the destroyer, and Brahma, the creator. With avatars you've heard of but may have never known came from the supreme adjudicator of the Hindu pantheon. As the preserver and transformer of the universe, he is directly tied to humanity and their development. Vishnu and his avatar Krishna play incredibly important roles within the Shimagami Tensei universe, but how much of his real-world influence ties back to his character? Without any further ado, let's discuss the Keeper of the Cosmic Order. This video was made possible by the great people over at my Patreon. If you'd like to support, check the link in the description below. Also, I have a Discord now, so if you want to come and chat with me and other wannabe theologists, come join and hang out. Vishnu, within Hinduism, is the middle of the Trimurti, or Trinity of Divinity. While many might think the creator of all life to be the most worthy of worship in a world religion, within Hinduism there sits the three forms, all equally important. First, let's explain the other aspects of the Trinity before diving into Vishnu himself. Brahma is the creator, associated with, surprise surprise, creation, but also knowledge and the four Vedas, the four Vedas being the oldest scriptures within Hinduism. He is said to have created the world and all creatures, created children from his mind despite having a wife, and even having created himself from a golden cosmic egg. Despite him creating the world, he is rarely worshipped and most devotion is given to the other two of the trinity. Shiva is the destroyer, associated with fertility, poison and medicine, as well as cattle. Despite adopting the title of destroyer, he is actually one of the most widely worshipped and beloved of the Hindu gods. He drank Vasuki's horrible poison to save the world during the churning of the cosmic ocean, one of the prominent struggles between the Devas and the Ashuras. In Hinduism, the universe operates in cycles. At the end of each time cycle, it is said that Shiva destroys all so as to make room for a new era. There is no malice in his actions, and he is viewed as one of the wisest beings in all of existence, though he is not perfect. There is one responsible for the beginning and one responsible for the end, but the one who is most important to us is Lord Vishnu, the Preserver. He is considered to be the complete avatar or incarnation of God. Vishnu is responsible for the balance of all things and protector of man from all that is evil and malicious. His appearances in holy texts and associated literature are innumerable, but consistently he is portrayed as having a wisdom and visual clarity which could only be described as divine. Vishnu's ability to discern right from wrong, good from evil, and judge all in the known universe is second to none. He is often depicted as a four-armed deity holding a lotus flower, a symbol of purity, a chakra discus representing the mind and infinite creativity within, a spiral conch shell representing the interconnected cyclical nature of existence and plays the sound of the creation of the universe, and finally a gada club which symbolizes authority and power. In artwork, he is often accompanied by snakes, but they protect and shelter him. These snakes represent human desires and their temptations. His seeming comfort and symbiosis with them convey a domination over the evils of life. Due to his divine abilities, Vaishnavism has become one of the most predominant Hindu denominations, placing Vishnu as the supreme being, accounting for 67% of all Hindus. What is most interesting as it pertains to Vishnu is his list of avatars, which perfectly mirrored the evolution cycle of humanity itself. After the initial creation of the world, Vishnu can be interpreted as a primordial man and has existed alongside humanity in physical and spiritual form from the beginning to the end of the worldly cycle. There are 10 avatars in total and each have many stories associated with them, but I will give a brief description of each. The first incarnation is Matsya Avatar, meaning God appearing in the form of a fish. This avatar plays a role in warning the first man in a Hindu myth named Meni of a coming flood. The second avatar is Kurma Avatar, meaning God appearing in the form of a turtle. This avatar was the creature holding up Mount Mandara, chosen to be the churning rod of the ocean of milk to receive Amrita. The top of the mountain seated Vishnu himself, who brokered peace between the Devas and the Asuras for their mutual benefit. The third incarnation is Varaha Avatar, meaning God appearing in the form of a pig. This avatar is responsible for saving the earth itself, personified as the goddess Budevi out of the cosmic ocean. She was kidnapped by the demon Hiranyaksha and plunged into the depths. Even as a pig, Vishnu appeared, slew the demon and saved the world itself by lifting it up on its tusks, restoring the earth to its rightful place in the universe and preserving balance. The fourth incarnation is Narashima Avatar, meaning God who is half animal, half human. 
This avatar is often portrayed with a human body and leonin head and claws. The entity being torn apart in many idols is Hidanyakashipu, brother of Hidanyaksha, who was slain by the previous Vishnu avatar. The demon gained the boon of Brahma, from which he could not be slain during the day or night, inside or outside, neither by man, god, ashura, or animal. After the killing of his brother, Hiranyakashipu persecuted the followers of Vishnu and wreaked havoc on the land. Vishnu, aware of the boon's power, assumed a hybrid form, neither man nor animal, and slew him at the junction of night and day, and at the threshold of his home, neither inside nor outside. The fifth incarnation is Vamana Avatar, the god dwarf. This avatar is responsible for taking back the earth and heavens from the Ashura king Bali. At this point, Bali had defeated Indra, king of the gods, and overtaken the earth and the heavens, upon which the gods turned to Vishnu, the preserver, to sort out the imbalance and restore Indra's power. Sometime later, Bali is conducting ritualistic sacrifice, and Vishnu attends in the form of Vamana, the dwarf. Vamana requests only three steps of land from the great king Bali for the creation of a fire altar, to which he agrees. Hearing this, Vamana grows in size and encompasses the whole of existence in two steps and the final step is on the head of Bali. The heaven and the earth restored, and the Ashuras residing in the underworld, Vishnu once again brought balance with not a drop of blood spilled. The sixth incarnation is Parashurama Avatar, this time appearing in the form of a man, but an extremely violent one. Having been born to a sage named Yamadagni, Parashurama lived peacefully with his family and a celestial cow which provided the family all they desired. However, the local king hears of the celestial cow and requests Yamadagni to give it to him, which he is refused. The local king later, while Parashurama is away, steals the cow for himself. Yamadagni, finding out the cow is missing, begs the king to give back his family's lifeblood and is met with a strike of such force it kills the poor old man. Parashurama, finding out about the king's theft and his father's murder, takes up his axe and challenges the king to a duel. The duel is so violent and one-sided, it's likened to, as mighty Indra did the peak of a big mountain, and he who was brave and angry killed all the kings with his axe in the battle. Filled with rage and the understanding of how unequal the people are, Parashurama killed the kings even though they had fled due to the resentment against his father's murder. The warrior class of the areas all challenged him to avenge their kings, but they were all defeated as well. Believing he has restored order, Parashurama renounces the earth and his violent deeds and retires as a hermit in penance to the gods. With the death of a few, balance is restored. The seventh incarnation is Rama Avatar, the ideal man or the embodiment of Dharma. Rama was born a man, much like Parashurama, but a much more peaceful one. Having been born into royalty, his life was transformed by an unexpected exile into poverty and difficult circumstances. In his youth, he was quite reserved and level-headed, valuing honesty and morality. Upon being exiled, him, his family, and his devotees wandered into Panchavati, a realm inhabited by many Rakshasa, or Hindu demons. A demoness sees Rama and is enamored by him. She tries to seduce the man but is refused. She is enraged and threatens one of the devotees the brother of which attacks the demoness. This altercation sets in motion a cycle of violence that escalates to the king of demons, Ravana, who kidnaps Rama's wife. Finally, Rama travels south and marshals an army of monkeys commanded by Hanuman, son of the wind god Vayu, and kills Ravana along with his forces of evil. Upon Ravana's defeat, Rama and his family are celebrated and ascended to rule over the land. His rule is consistently described as just and fair. The eighth incarnation is Krishna Avatar, God of Protection and Compassion. This is the first of the avatars that is considered to be a complete incarnation of God, rather than just an aspect like the ones previous. If there's a quality that makes a good ruler, Krishna has it. If there's a quality that makes a good man, Krishna has it. If there's a quality that makes a good human being, Krishna has it. Described in several philosophical and spiritual texts as a god-child, prankster, model lover, divine hero and universal supreme being. Though Krishna never claimed to be, many perceived him as divine and even God made flesh, embodying the best qualities of humanity. In many aspects, he is the embodiment of what all humans should strive to be. Often depicted as a young boy playing the flute or a friendly looking adult riding a chariot and sometimes alongside Sheshanaga, all stories involving him portray him as an almost perfect entity. 
Even at the end of Krishna's life, where he is accidentally mistaken for a deer and shot by a hunter, his parting words were forgiveness for the man who would take his life. The ninth incarnation is Buddha Avatar, the Enlightened One. Though Buddhism does not see Buddha as an avatar of God, Hinduism sees Buddha as an avatar of Krishna. The man known as Buddha was once Siddhartha Gautama, who was born into royalty and sheltered from the outside world. One day, upon being brought out of the palace, the young Siddhartha saw his first glimpse at the plight of the common man. Seeing for the first time disease, violence, and poverty, he was stricken with guilt and needed to understand more, not just about the world, but about the nature of living itself. After what is known as the Great Renunciation, he abandoned his life of luxury and excess to live a life of begging, asceticism, and meditation in hopes of gaining true understanding. Through this life, he developed what is known as the Middle Path, which is between the sensual indulgence of his royal life and the severe asceticism of his peers. Through exercise of the mind with ethical training of commitment to harmony and meditation, one can achieve enlightenment and pari nirvana, or nirvana after death escaping samsara, the eternal cycle of life, suffering, death, and rebirth. Siddhartha Gautama himself is said to have attained this during his life, making him the founder and first ascended of Buddhism. Finally, the tenth incarnation is Kalki Avatar, the avatar that is yet to be. The final incarnation of Vishnu is one that is yet to exist, but is prophesied to come at the end of the Kali Yuga. In Hinduism, a Yuga is a world cycle, with Kali meaning strife or contention, Unfortunately, it is the cycle we find ourselves in now. It's believed that the previous yuga, known as Divapada Yuga, meaning twofold age, ended with the death of Krishna. As of 2022, Kali Yuga began 5,123 years ago and will end in the year 428,899, leaving us a cool 426,877 years of discord. Great. At the end of this yuga, Kalki will come and rejuvenate existence by ending the darkest period, removing what is unrighteous and ushering in the next yuga, Satya Yuga, meaning truth's essence. From Vishnu's incarnations, it can be understood he is closely related to humanity in almost every way. Much before Darwinian evolution, Krishna went through the life cycle of man itself, starting as a fish, then amphibian, stunted mammal, humanoid beast, stunted human, full human, then forms of humanity closer and closer to divinity. In Shin Megami Tensei, Vishnu is portrayed as a yellow or sometimes pink divine being holding the same objects he holds in real life depictions of him. The lotus, chakram, spiraled conch, and mace are all present. In the original Shin Megami Tensei, he looks much more like the depictions of Krishna with his young human appearance and flute, but later on, many of the avatars of Vishnu were turned into separate demons in the series. Vishnu himself never plays too big a role in any of the Shin Megami Tensei games, but his eighth avatar, Krishna, very much does. During the events of Shin Megami Tensei IV Apocalypse, Krishna appears as an opposing force for both the forces of law and chaos, ultimately wanting to remake the world. Krishna sees humans as little more than nuisances in the way of his plan, and manipulates all he speaks to to achieve his goal. When Vishnu is finally freed, he immediately attempts to convince Flynn to become his Kalki to put an end to this cycle, and from what we learned, this makes a lot more sense. Though ultimately thwarted, Krishna's goal to put an end to this cycle of strife is not without reason. Alongside Buddha and many other divine entities, the dream of a new world of gods dies with him. Well, that was Vishnu, an extremely interesting god of many aspects. Learning not just about him, but all of his avatars as well, was a big undertaking, but one I really enjoyed researching. Honestly, a lot of his avatars could be videos themselves, but I bundled them all into one. Let me know your favorite in the comments down below, and while you're down there, leave a like and subscribe if you haven't already. Special thanks to Anton, Big T, Frankie Stoned, Jim Taylor, Just a Middleman, Konyuna, Matt M, Mr. Eight Eyes, The Toaster Messiah, VideoGamer75, and many more for supporting the channel on Patreon. If you'd like to support, check the link in the description below. Thanks for listening to the lore of the Hindu god Vishnu, and I'll see you in the next Tony For You. Have a good one.